Here you can see same detail callout drawn in three different ways. Each way of drawing these detail callouts have some pros and some cons. And I will tell you all about them so you can choose which way of modeling is best for your project detailing. So let's start with the left one, the first one. The first detail callout is drawn in a drafting view. This is the simplest way of drawing a detail callouts. It consists only of detail elements like field regions, annotations, and detail components and text notes. You can create this view by going to view tab and pressing on drafting view button. And this creates an empty view where you can draw all your detail elements. You can import images, PDFs or DWG files here. You can also add detail elements here from your library. You can draw basically anything you want in here in this view. Add text notes and make your detail callout as detailed as you like. So this is the first one. The second and the third one are detail callouts made with callout view command under the view tab. So the creation of the views of the detail views are the same, but the modeling differs for each of these detail callouts. So to create a classic detail callout, you go to your plan, let's say level one, and open your section. Go to the section you have in your project, then go to view and click on callout command. Choose detail in properties and draw a rectangle around the place you want the detail callout to be. Now you can move this callout tag and double click on the callout tag to open the detail view. Now you can change your detail level, change scale and start detailing your callout. But there is a big difference of how you model your callout details. Even though the second and the third way of creating these detail views are the same, the modeling difference lies in the way you display your model when you draw the detail and when you present the detail. You can switch display model to do not display or half tone in the second way of modeling. And when you switch it to the half tone, you just draw your detail items over the model items using the detail items and when you're finished you just switch your display model properties to do not display and you're left with your detail callout that consists almost entirely of detail items this is the second way of modeling you can see that this callout when i switch it to the half tone it shows the model elements in the background when i isolate you can see that here's the roof and all the 2d detail elements are drawn on top of the 3D model elements. Here's the wall and uh, here you can see that on top of the roof element there's field regions drawn and the gutter is just a detail line drawn on top of the gutter and the roof top elements are also repeating detail elements and when I switch to do not display the model elements disappear but you are left with a complete detail callout consisting only of detail elements. And this is the big difference between the second and the third way of modeling callout details. In the third way, we leave the model elements visible by setting display model to normal. That way you can select the model elements, but uh, there are other detail elements like this repeated detail element. You can also add a material tags here, keynotes and wall tags and roof tags but you can also add a detail items like this window here the window is hidden here but uh, I replace this window with detail item and these are three different methods of modeling callout details now you know how to create views and now let's dig deeper into what are the pros and cons for each method and what they're used for mainly in my practice Let's start with the drafting view. And the biggest advantage of modeling color details in this way is that it can be transferred from project to project. Let's say we have another project here and we want to transfer that color detail. We just go to insert tab and click on insert views from file. Pick our file and choose our drafting view that we want to transfer to this project. In this case, it's detail drafting. Click OK. And here we have a fully functional drafting view with all the detail items that was placed in the previous project. That's the main advantage for the details that don't change from project to project. 
Second advantage is that it doesn't have to be edited if the geometry changes, if the model geometry changes. If we go to section and move this roof up, there isn't any additional work to be done for this color detail. The detail just stays the same, as it is basically disconnected from any 3D elements in the model. We can see the same behavior also in the second way of modeling color details. The detail elements stay the same. But that is not the case in the third way of modeling color details. There is much work to be done for this color detail. The roof is up and we have to change the detail elements to fit to the new roof position. This can be a disadvantage but also an advantage. So let's undo this action and let's go back to the first way, the drafting way of modeling color details. So the cons, there are many cons to this method of modeling color details. First one is that there is no way of adding elevation marks. In the second and the third way of modeling the color details, you can see that I can add a elevation marks. Also, there is no way of adding material tags, so they don't update if the material changes. And no changes are made if the geometry changes. And you can see that all the material tags are just a text notes. And the same goes for the second way of modeling. But in the third way of modeling, we have material tags added to these materials. And to demonstrate what I mean, let's add a material tag to this beam. Material tag. And let's add it here. And now when we change the description of the material from timber trusses, to let's say metal beams metal beams the material description changes also here and it doesn't change in the second way of modeling it just stays the same and of course in the first one and if we go into the roof edit type and change the material completely Let's change this timber to the timber framing. Then you can see that now it's timber framing. And it updated accordingly. But it doesn't update here in the second and first way of modeling. So that's a big con in my opinion. You can't also add keynotes. In the third way of modeling you can add keynotes. But in the first and in the second way of modeling, you cannot add any keynotes. You also cannot add any tags. You can add tags in the third way of modeling. There's a wall tag. You can also add roof tags and any other tags. It can be displayed in intersecting views. And what do I mean by that? Let's go to the second way of modeling. And in the third way of modeling also, you can see the level here. So when you go to that view, Go to properties and then set show in intersecting views and then when you remove the current view, let's say none and when you go to the level 2 you can see the call of detail also in the plan view and if you want to change the tag you can change that to let's say section and your call of detail is visible in the plan view or in the any other intersecting views. So that's a little disadvantage for the drafting detail view. So let's see what it mainly used for. So I mainly use it for the details that will not change. So I don't have to update them. And details that repeat from project to project. And also you can use that drafting view if you want to redraw the details from JPEGs, PDFs or DWG files. You just link the image, you can insert the image, import CAD, link PDF file and just redraw the detail that you want. And it doesn't have to correspond with any elements in the model. So as for the second way of modeling, using callout views, one of the advantages is that it can be partially transferred from project to project. And what I mean by partially transferring, when you go to the other project, go to the floor plan and select your section, go to that section and select insert from file, insert 2D elements from file, 
and here you can see that we have our detail views and our section views also our drafting views you can select this section view or this section view with the normal display let's select this with the most uh, detail items and when we import 2d elements from that view you can see that almost all of the detail items are imported and you can kind of reuse this uh, color detail it doesn't correspond to any elements in the new model but you can reuse these 2d elements and you can possibly reuse this color detail when we try to insert 2d elements from file with the third way of modeling that's called detail normal you can see that there is little to no detail elements imported and here you can see the big difference between the second and the third way of modeling color details there is no details here and you cannot reuse this uh, section callout so let's go back to our first file and see that uh, the next advantage is that this color detail doesn't break when we change the geometry so what do I mean by that is then let's go to the plan view let's go to the section and when we move the roof up let's say by 100 the detail drawing doesn't break and we don't have to fix anything it stays the same because mostly there is detail elements that are not locked with the model elements and here you can see that in the third way of modeling we have a roof that moved up and we have to fix this detail drawing let's undo that and let's see the next advantage is that we can add elevation marks here you can see that i've added elevation marks to the detail elements and they correspond with the model and the next advantage is that we have a visual indication if the geometry changes when we switch model display to the half tone and let's say move the roof roof up again by 100 we can see that the roof is changed and we have a decision to make if we want to change the detail or not uh, but we know that the, the geometry doesn't correspond with the detail drawing and com when we compare this to the first way of drawing in drafting view there is no way to tell if the geometry changes in this way we can see in the half tone that we have to change the geometry if we want so the next advantage is that it can be displayed in intersecting views and that I showed already and the cons is that we cannot update or use material tags in this way of drawing these are also text notes so the next disadvantage or the con is that it doesn't update when the geometry changes and we have to switch to the half tone to see the changes in geometry and the keynotes and tags for the elements that are going to be hidden cannot be added and it's mainly used for the details that might change as you have a visual indication if the geometry changes then you have to decide if you want to change the detail so i mainly use that for unique details and the third way of modeling in my opinion is kind of more the bim way of modeling details so let's move that roof back and you can see that we can add a tags for these walls let's say we have wall one here and when we change the wall type the tag changes also so we can have w2 here and next you can add a material tags add keynotes to these walls or keynotes to these materials if you use keynotes so when the element changes in the model it also changes in the details and this way of modeling i try to use as little field regions as possible for example here you can see that it's modeled using cut profile under the view cut profile so let's delete this cut profile and when we click on the cut profile and let's pick boundary between faces we can stretch that insulation layer up to the roof 
and in this way we don't have to redraw the wall layers as filled regions and when we move the roof up we can see that it changes also with the roof but we have to move the detail items in this case it's the filled region and also the elevation mark changes the gutter changes but we have to move all the other detail elements and you can see when we undo the roof move if we want to change let's say the window opening let's move the window down we can see that the window opening changes and we have to make changes in also in our detail placement we have to move this item down okay let's undo that and let's see the pros for this way of modeling so as i said the element tags can be added the element keynotes also can be added the material tags can be added and it updates the geometry information and it can be displayed in intersecting views as i showed before and the cons is that it cannot be transferred to another project and the biggest con is that we have to fix that detail view if the geometry changes occur so and i can also add a another advantage is that it's less work in the beginning when you draw the detail so it's less redrawing of the model elements because we mainly use the 3d model elements and the cons for the second method is that we have to redraw all the elements from the model elements to the detail elements so to better understand the difference between the second and the third method we can see that we have a do not display model already set in the second method but when we switch that on in the third method you can clearly see that there is less detail elements here and the difference is kind of huge in the second method all the elements are redrawn in the third method most of the elements are the 3d elements that are used and one important thing to remember is that you cannot use material tag for the membrane layer so if you have membrane layer here like roofing felt it has to be added in a text note and that's what i do in every detail so here you can see that it's membrane layer with a thickness of zero and it cannot be tagged so we have to use a line here in the line style of roofing felt and we have to add a text note to represent the membrane layer and we have to change that manually and in my practice i try to use the third and the first way of modeling color details but you have to consider the pros and the cons for every method and i think the best way is to use all three methods in your project i hope this information helped have a great day and see you in the next video